Harvard did a study in 2020 with over 100 working adults, 400 MBA students, and over 300 managers and their employees. And here's what they found. Here's why so many people resist leadership. It usually falls into one of these three categories. The first perceived risk is interpersonal. Resentment, people resenting you for stepping up, for taking that risk. So there's a risk of being resented for taking a risk. Competition, people competing with you or feeling like you're competing with them. The perceived risk of people judging and saying, why did you get to move up and I didn't? Who do you think you are? The second perceived risk is image. How you look to people. People imagining that you're too aggressive, you're too much of a know-it-all. Now that you're in leadership, assigning certain character traits to your attributes that you may or may not have. And the third perceived risk is blame. People don't step up because of the risk of being responsible for the choices they make. The interesting thing about this Harvard study is that these are all perceived risks. They may or may not actually come to pass, but they are perceived and our perceptions sway our choices. Now here's what's fascinating in any of those three realms. Let's take a look at interpersonal. People are gonna judge you no matter what you do. They just are. You judge you, you judge other people, other people judge you. I have a whole playlist of videos on judgment you can check out. So why worry about it? Why is that a risk if it's something that's already occurring and it's really just part of being human? Notice if you signify it as a perceived risk instead of engaging it as part of the landscape. It's part of the playing field of leadership. It's part of the playing field of life. You can't get out of it as much as you might want to or try to. So let's look at image. Image is connected in some ways to interpersonal. It's being afraid of how you look to other people. I was working with a client the other day who says they are committed to excellence and at the same time is deathly afraid of making a mistake. How do those go together? If your image is important to you, you're committed to excellence and you don't wanna make mistakes, those things don't live together. The only way you can actually achieve or come close to excellence is by making mistakes, getting feedback and course correction. But oftentimes when we are focused on image, we're not even talking about what other people think of us. We're really talking about the way we look to ourselves. That's an image that we wanna preserve, oftentimes at all costs. And it is a perceived risk to that image in order to step into leadership. Now let's look at blame, which typically sounds like, I don't wanna be blamed if something goes wrong, which is so interesting. When did you decide something is gonna definitely go wrong? Have you ever wondered what could go wrong by you resisting or withholding your participation? What about what could go right? Does that carry any weight? Could that carry even equal weight as you're considering these perceived risks? What's it like to live in a world where you're so afraid of being blamed that you don't even step in to the risk of fulfilling who you are in this world, of developing your character and your leadership? What's it like to live in that small of a box? What if it turned out? What if you grew from the experience? What if it didn't turn out and it was still fulfilling? I love listening to podcasts. I was listening to one the other day and Seth Godin asked this question, what if you knew everything you were going to engage in, every single project that you have on your plate was gonna fail? Which one would you do anyway? And I loved that question because it connected to the joy of giving yourself to something bigger than you. And however it turns out, the process itself is valuable, just like stepping into your leadership. Now imagine if two years from now, you and I were having a conversation or you rewatched this video and you realized I am in the exact same place I was two years ago. Would that be fulfilling for you? Would you say that your life is fulfilling and enjoyable? Are you living out purpose with freedom and passion? In order to do that, there are definitely risks. Yes, people will judge you. Yes, you will make mistakes. 
Yes, you will be responsible for your choices like everyone else. And now what? What is more important than any of those perceived risks that would draw you out of the fear and into the vision for living into the fullness of who you were created to be? I can promise you that at the end of your life, playing small is not gonna be satisfying. So what if you decided now to play big, to exercise that fierce courage that lives inside of you and to take the next step in leadership in any arena in your life? What would be one specific action step you could take right away that would further your leadership? So if you're ready to take yourself on, like, comment, I wanna hear from you. This is so critical.